Hey guys, last week we talked about the major pests for tomatoes and what companion plants can help with those. It was a very popular video, maybe just because of the hairy vetch. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, I can't do it again. So just watch last week's video, I'll link it down below. This week, we're gonna do the same thing, except for peppers, chilies, capsicums, whatever you call them, I've got the solution, coming up. Hey, I'm Brian with Next Level Gardening, and if you're looking to join an online garden community that offers tips, tricks, and support to help take your gardening to the next level, you're in the right place. Get started now by clicking subscribe and hit the bell so you never miss anything. Now let's get growing. In today's video, I'm gonna talk you through 16 companion plants to plant with your peppers to help with pests and disease. And there might even be one or two that actually help fertilize your peppers as well. As I said last week, I'm not interested in doing a video about old wives tales or mumbo jumbo. This video is gonna be sharing evidence-based strategies only. So let's start off with one of the pests that bother my peppers the most, along with many other plants, and that is aphids. Aphids are tiny, soft-bodied little jerks that come in a wide variety of colors, but they're also kind of wimpy because they can just be sprayed off with a hard stream of water from the hose and they usually drown. And that is if you're vigilant. If not, they can cause a lot of damage. They're actually the vampires of the plant world, literally sucking the blood or sap from plants. And their damage is usually manifested in curling leaves, especially on new growth. That's where you're gonna find them concentrated. Aphids produce a sticky substance known as honeydew that actually attracts ants. And they're even more annoying. There is a plant group that actually produces a scent so strong that aphids steer clear of it. And that would be the allium family, onions. But you have to find the right type that's gonna be growing the same time as your peppers and for the same length of time. So onions wouldn't quite work because you harvest them well before the peppers are done producing in most climates, same with garlic. So two good choices would be green onions or spring onions, salad onions, bunching onions, whatever you wanna call them, uh, and chives. Plant them around your peppers, you know, in amongst the peppers, and that is going to produce a steer clear of me scent that the aphids will hate. Wait, they really are vampires. Garlic? And if that doesn't work, I bet you can drive a tiny little splinter through their heart. Okay, that might be hard, but there is a bug that can do that exact same thing. A minute pirate bug actually has a beak shaped like a wooden stake. And they do that exact thing to aphids. They stab them with that beak and devour them. Now to attract minute pirate bugs to your garden, you want to include, first of all, a lot of humble flowers. Humble flowers are an inflorescence with hundreds if not thousands of tiny little flowers. They're all shaped like an umbrella. So members of the carrot family, plants like cosmos, zinnias, and yarrow work well. Um, sunflowers also attract minute pirate bugs, and so does spearmint. Now, a word of warning on any of the mint family, you definitely don't want to plant them in the ground. You want them in pots. Ask anyone who's put them in the ground, you'll never get rid of them. They are highly invasive. Of course, no talk of aphids could be complete without mentioning the humble ladybug, who in adult and larval stage can eat thousands of aphids in their very short lifespan. Now, the humble flowers that we've talked about before, those will all attract ladybugs, as well as herbs like thyme and oregano. Another pest that likes my peppers at least, and let me know down below in the comments if any of these pests you've seen on your peppers or if I've missed some, but uh, that would be the leaf miner. Now leaf miners are the small larvae of many species of fly and moth. And they actually, uh, the eggs are laid between the upper and lower surface of the leaf. So right in between there and they tunnel through that section, 
never piercing the top or bottom layer of the leaf, but right in between. And you're not going to see the actual larva, but you're going to see their tracks. It looks like these squiggly little lines all over the leaf. They're actually really difficult to control with spray because again, the top and the bottom layers of the leaf are protecting them. Kind of smart. However, there is one insect that has outsmarted them. The parasitic wasp. The parasitic wasp can find them inside the leaf, stab right through, right into them. There's a lot of stabbing going on. They can lay their eggs right inside that tiny little larva. And when those eggs hatch, they eat that larva from the inside out. And again, humble flowers to the rescue. They attract the parasitic wasp. In addition to the ones we've already mentioned, you can use dill, flowering carrot, and alyssum. Another pepper pest is the teeny tiny white fly. You might only know you have them if you brush against a plant and a little white swarm of them kind of flutters into a cloud in the air around you. If you check under the leaves, you might see a little white fingerprint that is actually their eggs. It's just the start of what can possibly happen. If left unchecked and in a severe infestation, the leaves can actually grow white beard looking growths hanging from each and every leaf. It's super unsightly. In addition, they're also sap suckers and they're going to uh, turn your leaves yellow. Uh, the plant will start losing leaves and can die if there's enough of them. So what insect can take care of whitefly? Well, how about an insect with an equally lame and descriptive name as whitefly? Bring in the big-eyed bugs. Yep, that's their name. What three-year-old is in charge of naming insects? Big-eyed bugs like diversity. So all of the things we've already mentioned planted around your peppers are going to definitely attract them. They also like to hide in bushier type plants. So adding a cover crop of crimson clover around your peppers will give them lots of places to hide. A great thing about crimson clover is it is a nitrogen fixer. It is part of the legume family. And so it adds nitrogen to the soil that heavy feeders like peppers can take advantage of. Another predator of whitefly are damsel bugs. Now, a lot of people asked uh, last week on the video about marigolds. And I didn't include it because I did include it in last year's tomato companion planting uh, video. And so I just wanted to switch things up a little bit. Marigolds are pretty much the gold standard for companion planting. Everyone kind of knows about those, but they actually do uh, attract damsel bugs. And so does shrubbery. So if you have a uh, perennial border or a shrub border near your vegetable garden, that's going to attract all kinds of damsel bugs. And they also like lavender and thyme. So honestly, an herb garden next to your vegetable garden works wonders in many ways, as we've seen, they're talking about all these different pests. And I think the bottom line is, you know, in companion planting, one of the major things you can do is create diversity in your garden. You know, forget monocropping, you know, huge beds or rows of the same thing. It just doesn't work without pesticides. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to have to use those. Even organic ones, they're a pain. And, you know, if not used correctly, they can hurt beneficials. So fortunately, pepper plants don't have as many pests as a lot of other vegetables that we grow. But if I have forgotten something or you know of something extra, please put that in the comments down below. If you learned something from this video, please give me a thumbs up. It does help the video to get pushed out to a wider audience, so I would appreciate it. And hopefully that wider audience would appreciate it as well. So tomorrow is Easter and we're going to be talking about two giveaways. So you definitely want to come back for that. Otherwise, have a great Saturday and I'll see you tomorrow.